This episode of Dust War Journals is brought to you by our latest contributor on Patreon at the producer level, Roger. Big thanks to Roger for supporting Dust War Journals. And if you want to support the podcast, check out patreon.com slash dustwarjournals. And now on with the show. This is Dust War Journals, episode 21, your number one stop for all news and chit-chat and other discussions that related to Dust 1947. And my name is Johannes, and with me today are... Magnus, known as Magoff or Magwiz on the forum. And the always so... Huggable. <laughs> yes, and I was w- looking for another word, but let's say huggable. Luda! <laughs> so how are you do- do- doing this e- fine evening? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's a huge difference compared to a couple of months ago, because now there's a sweltering heat. Yeah. <laughs> this oh, yes. is the warmest uh, May, and, and yeah, the it's June books, now, almost. well, but uh, yeah, exactly. It's the warmest May, I think, like ever measured here in Gothenburg. Yeah. <laughs> It's insane for for what it is now. So, totally. Yeah, it's kind of an acclimation process for for us northerners up in here in the normally cold country. So mm. <laughs> there's have, hasn't been for at least for me not that much hobbying, unfortunately. Um, partly because uh, just not having enough energy, and also having to uh, make a whole lot of trips for work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we have to um, mention, even if it's not strictly a uh, dust-related hobby, we have made a huge hobby uh, thing uh, a few weeks ago when we uh, christened uh, Magnus' uh, hobby room. Yes, yes we did. Uh, and <laughs> yes, it was... we did. We spent an almost entire days playing board games. Yeah, that was great. It was great. Immensely. Immensely yeah. good. Oh. But yeah, so it felt, felt really nice. I think I should expect for you to uh, finally get going with your hobby room. And it's, yes, yeah. and actually that is kind of what I've been doing lately, uh, doing more stuff in the hobby room to get it ready. And actually uh, today I went to Ikea and bought some uh, nice shelves and uh, put them together. So now I have uh, a lot more room for stuff awesome so that that was was kind of what you were uh, hinting at before the show yeah you exactly you had uh, built something large stuff. yeah i <laughs> built something large today <laughs> <laughs> large and hobby related yeah we yes. get it <laughs> and you already have so such an impressive collection of games when we were sitting there we we 90 percent of the time when we we're drooling on the other games we didn't play even though it was immensely fun to play the games we were yeah, you playing know, you know my like, shelf there it's um yeah. it's not huge or anything but it's uh, yeah, it, it, I have some games. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And uh, the shelf I bought today is slightly bigger than that one, and I expect to fill most of it fairly quickly, actually. So, <laughs> <laughs> only with minis then, or with uh, more games? Or? A lot of dust stuff, at least. Ah, nice. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Very cool. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I've actually painted a little bit, at least, on my Polish army. Uh, some orange and some sand coloring. And, uh, and I also bought some uh, yellow washes, so uh, just Ooh. to get that. Because, uh, as I showed you before, my army is, uh, is finally decided. And good is that, because it was the last day yesterday to, to send it in. So, <laughs> uh, and uh, it's always when we're tinkering in the, in the last minute, should I have two of these, not some one of these decisions and, decisions yeah <laughs> you always but then since i painted my steel rain and my uh, hot dog and i was so happy with the painting scheme on those two i just couldn't switch them and those were the only ones in my army that i thought okay if i have to switch some because i wanted some observers in so i can remove one of those and doodle something with observers and something else but yeah it's even more vanilla now but 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 no, no observers. Uh, I have to shoot in blind my artillery boys. <laughs> well, Hopefully. better than nothing, I guess. Yeah, uh, definitely. And uh, but I, I'm, uh, I have a challenge to all Polish players or players in Poland. I mean, anyone not beating my army, you need to go on a practice tour. <laughs> just, I'm just saying, if you can't beat this army. Yeah, don't don't tell people. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll hear from more from you how it goes uh, at at the very least in in next episode because you uh, of us three you're the only one who's going to Poland. I wish I could, but uh, like I said, lots of 
work trips for me, mm-hmm. and that's what I'm where I'm going. So. Yeah, and you excelled now once again to with your technology uh, <laughs> consummation or uh, buying of products. So you facilitated me with a remote microphone, and uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, you you don't have to uh, uh, air the things I will record with it, but I will do my best to fill that. Well, how was it? Two hundred and thirty-two hours. It was, had a storage capacity of yep, and only four days. So, so you do the math. So I'm going to yeah. fill it. So <laughs> brace yourselves, <laughs> listeners, for a mammoth episode next time. Yeah. So. <laughs> minimum of two hundred and thirty-two hours, and I expect you two guys want to comment on the things I. Yeah, sure, absolutely. <laughs> Perhaps it's you two who dreads it the most, having to listen <laughs> to it. And just, oh yeah, no, we can't show it. Yeah, <laughs> remove it. Just throw it away, please, please. Mm. No, perhaps one gold, uh, something will shimmer inside all that mass. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's, it's going to be very interesting to hear, not just uh, audio-wise, but just uh, all the. <laughs> 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 yes, wrong, well, wrong picture in yeah, my mind. Okay. Yeah, well. uh, uh, what I was thinking is uh, just the kind of experience, see how the tournament has grown from last year um, and just everything. Because every time that we've gone so far, they have outdone themselves, it seems. And it seems if they keep doing that, it's, uh, I, I, just, I almost can't imagine where the tournament is going to end up. Yeah, and, and I'd just like to mention as well that uh, you also have will have furnished me with a, 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 a good visual way of people understanding that it's the war journals that's there. So if anyone who listens to us who don't want to have the, a microphone in their face, uh, bar from the Swedish ones, because they will find it in, in times and places. <laughs> they have no choice. No, no they, they are beyond... Um, saving or something like that because <laughs> uh, uh, I think Johannes also mentioned that it were able to use it on the plane as well so uh, but if you don't like it just tell me and I will not uh, get in your harass face you. with it or harass <laughs> you uh, I will do my best though to destroy the final of course with my commentary and uh, or uh, highlight it I mean uh, make yes. it even better <laughs> so uh, yeah well it's super exciting for me as you guys understand <laughs> So that's yeah, what's I'm, coming I'm really up, yeah. looking forward to that final. If you are playing and commentating <laughs> at the same time, that would be hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> Bomba Harris wrestling himself <laughs> in the red corner against the blue corner. And he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, let, let's get going with some, uh, some news. Uh, there's been, like, always a few, few new releases. But again, as we've seen from the uh, previous couple of months there's not been any new completely new uh, units but rather some re-releases of older units in new premium patterns Mm -hmm. so we have uh, the mobile wagon for uh, for the axis uh, with in the condor pattern i i love this model (laughs) i made my own uh, fan-made version of this uh, like a few years ago before there was a card for it because i just love how it looks (laughs) So I, I can't wait to play play it. It's uh, it's just a, an amazing kit. And then we also have the Winterchild Premium Alternate version. So this is the same model that uh, was available with the Winterchild book, um, like last year. Yeah, but now it's it's just the model. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. it might be a little more palatable uh, price wise uh, also for some people because. I, I guess some people felt that that uh, bundle with the book was a bit on the expensive side if you mm-hmm. weren't interested in the model or if you weren't interested in the book. But now you but can just get just the model. Yeah, but they haven't made a reprint of the book, right? So no, the... uh, not in physical form, but you can mm-hmm. still buy it uh, in ebook format. So yep, that's, right. a, that's an mm-hmm. alternative. Uh, we also had the, the Spetsnaz Assault Squad in the Sverograd pattern. Um, we also had a kind of hiccup, I, th- I think. Uh, there was, a, for a very, very brief time, there was also the Observer Squad for the Spetsnaz up on the page, and then it disappeared. Mm. So uh, I'm, I right. wonder if that was kind of something that they planned to release and then they changed their minds or something went up prematurely. I don't really know. And you checked the app, so they don't have uh, camouflage now uh, on the back of the... I mean, it could just, just be... It You're not be, in yeah, range. Yeah, they just get... They, yeah. Well, that, that's the thing. Stealth. They should have camouflage because they yes. went back into camouflage. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I mean, so, so. perhaps it's just... 
<laughs> I haven't checked the app for a few days, so yeah. you, you never know what happens. <laughs> and then finally, the Packwagen, also for for the Axis. This is the Hanomag with the uh, with the Pack anti anti tank gun, mm-hmm. uh, which we've seen before, but this is in the Condor pattern. Yeah, but this and the mobile wagon, it's very, very good that they print, uh, they re-release these, so to speak, because you really want to see them more on the gaming board. Yeah. Uh, we were on it on the last episode with how much we liked when people play. Uh, when well, you mix up yeah. the uh, the fans, the fanciful and the historical, mm-hmm. so Definitely. to speak. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's also been a, quite a lot of interesting previews from various sources. Um, the official Dust USA Facebook page put up um, a few images of some units that are going to be available on, at Origins, the uh, the convention in the US, uh, which is starting on June 13th, so just um, shy of two weeks from now. That's the USMC and the Blutkreuz Army boxes first off. These are... I think we talked about this before. I love the concept of these army boxes yeah. because it's it's a fantastic deal for new players, uh, and it's just uh, the perfect way to kind of expand the starter boxes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it, 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 yeah, it, it feels very I don't know natural. Uh, you don't really have to think too much about it. You can just get one of these army boxes and possibly one of the uh, headquarter boxes, and yeah. then then you can play for hours and hours with that. Definitely, and also the pricing, if I read it correctly, are 90 US dollars, and they have the Vortan for the pricing of 50. Okay, you get the Flammeluther as well then, but uh, then if you add two squads, roughly 20 each, because uh, I think they do that, at least one zombie squad for free for the Bloitkreis army, and I think it's almost the same with the... Uh, it it kind of looks like that. You, yeah. you buy this box and you sort of get one unit for free basically yeah. so uh, what, what it nice is price. is uh, it's one walker it's two of the uh, five man unit squads and one support squad yeah and the same with the USMC there where you got the dogs and the uh, you got a heavy the heavy engineering team and the what is it the one with the bazookas so with the country oh yeah yeah it mm. looks like it could be the uh, anti uh, anti tank Unit. Yeah, so both these boxes have two close combat war, uh, units and two anti uh, range, two range units. So it should be able to deal with threats on each level. So that's uh, also a good yeah, it's thought. A, kind of yeah. a nice mix of stuff. Seems like they have thought a bit about it before they did it, and not just taking the. Five, four things they want to get rid of thing are, <laughs> yeah. but we don't and expect that yeah, from Dust it, TV, it does of course. Seem, so. It does seem, if you think about uh, the contents of the starter boxes, that they complement uh, mm. those those beginning armies quite well as, uh, also, yeah. I think. Yeah, well, well put uh, that Bloitkreuz Corps army box with the von Stein box, and that's... Mm. Actually, a detail I thought of that I also really like about these army boxes that I hope they continue with is to not include a hero in it mm-hmm. yeah yeah definitely uh, yeah i agree because you, you you if you want the hero you have the hero boxes and these are make it uh, also possible for you to build uh, to buy several of these boxes exactly, if you exactly. want to and you don't get extra units that you won't be able to use them mm-hmm. so yeah. that's a that's a very good point yeah, that's it. Really, it's good. If I hadn't already that much units, well, I mean, especially those Bloitkreuz Corps army box, two of those, that would really make a formidable army, I think. Actually, yeah, would, yeah. Absolutely. I wonder who could... Well, yeah, that could be a handful. Yeah, um, yeah well, I, I'm sure the USMC is good as well, but it's just not my... Not my cup of tea compared yeah. to the Bloitkreutz. <laughs> yeah. And uh, speaking of the Bloitkreutz, next on the list, the uh, Wotan, Wotan R, AR, and the Flam Luther 2 kits for the Bloitkreutz. So this is basically the same as the existing Wotan kit, but with an extra machine gun. Ah, yeah. I hadn't realized that before. Yes. So that's... Uh, an underbelly machine gun. Yes. As well. So probably as you... Yeah, you mentioned that on uh, Facebook. You, you speculated it probably one or two points more than because it's another machine gun for it. Yeah, uh, so, very likely, I think. Yeah. And that's... With, yeah, with three reasonable. weapons lines, then it's... And especially with the Flammeluther, if that also is allowed, yeah, of course it's number two there. So that will also have two machine guns. It's yeah. going to be interesting to see uh, what the point cost will be in the end. Because, I mean, especially the, the Votan is slightly um, on the pricey side. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's it's devastating. Absolutely, mm-hmm. it's a really good vehicle. But as we've said before, the the uh, Blutkreuz they are kind of lacking in the anti-aircraft department. Mm-hmm. But now the Votan don't really have to choose. They can fire against infantry and against aircraft at the same time. I mean, yeah. it's not that many dice against aircraft or anything. But with a with a regular Votan, you you always had to to choose. Mm, yeah. So uh, and you don't want to waste. Sometimes you had to waste your big uh, lasers just to combat infantry swarms. Mm-hmm. But now perhaps you can use them for like better things <laughs> and just yeah, use the machine exactly. guns for so, the infantry. And I mean, if you're uh, already spending 20 plus points, you might as well spend a couple more and, and make it even more effective and make it more yeah. um, versatile. Mm, yeah. So. And um, that's, that's the thing with the Flamluther as well, because it the extra machine gun gives it a little bit more flexibility because the flamers you can't really use until you get very close. Mm-hmm. But now you have an option to use the machine guns while you're advancing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I like this very much. I, I like the normal uh, Flamluther as well, though. Uh, I, I, I don't play Axis that often, but I s- try to stick it in as often as I could. Uh, but of course, we, were f- we, we are all uh, excited about the Flamingo as well. And, and I mean, like this is basically the, the, the bigger, stronger version. And that could be... Yeah, I like it. I like it very, very, very much, I must yeah. say. I also like the Flam uh, Luther. Mm. I've been playing it with the uh, Panzer Prinz a few times, mm. and uh, that's a nasty combination. Actually. Yeah, uh, especially with dense terrain. So you can, if you can get up close with it and just, mm, yeah, yes, <laughs> have some barbecue. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Next up, the Königs Luther and Sturmkönig kit. So this is just a basic re-release of the the old uh, FFG era kit. Yeah, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I still think the Sturmkönig especially is one of the most beautiful Walker models they've done. Mm, uh, I, awesome. I just love the the aggressive look of it. Mm. Uh, you don't really see that many of these on the table anymore, though. It mm. seems like they were very, very popular uh, at the end of V V2, uh, especially. Mm. Yeah, the Sturmkönig was super popular. The Koenigs Luther, I don't, I'm not sure about it. It's, uh, it's so specialized. And yes. I think that's kind of the problem. I mean, whatever it looks at basically dies. Mm. <laughs> but it's only good against those super heavies. Mm. Yeah, but it still so, has 12 dice for infantry as well. With yeah, those. But yeah, but it's... But you, so, you don't really get that much... Uh, at, at least... Uh, what I've seen on, on tournaments, uh, people play a lot of infantry, and mm. against the infantry, it's it's a waste of a lot of points, basically. But uh, I don't know the the Sturmkönig. It's uh, yeah, well, I would say the Sturmkönig is played uh, not in every Axis army, of course, but you, you still see it from time to time. It's definitely from time to time. But the f- problem being that we have had the chopper problem, of course, and people like to take it in to destroy choppers, but. It doesn't really kill choppers. Uh, you have to have the Panzer Prince and you have to sustain fire to really, really, really try to kill choppers. And still they don't go down. And then people, I think, go for the uh, uh, the multitude of units because you get a two or three units instead. But it seems like we're going to see a few Sturmkönigs in Poland. We usually see two or three in Poland every year, I think. Mm. Uh, I expect to be seeing at least two from what I gather. But, um, well, yeah, well, we will see. We will see. Wasn't it's there great... some news earlier about the, I mean, in the in the catalog, we, we had um, Koenig's Votan coming? Yes, mm-hmm. we mm-hmm. do. And this is not included in this kit. So it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, that's probably going to be in the Koenig's uh, Lothar kit, I'm guessing. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, that so that was put in the... Okay. Catalog, sorry, yeah. I'm cutting that's in both, true. but uh, yeah. it was in the catalog with that one. So that's so not in this box, but no. so it's still coming up. And um, basically, they, then they must be um, block as well then. But uh, I could see that one being just uh, Lloyd Kreutz as well. Could be. But, um, well. Uh, next up, we have the Cobra, Cobra and the Rattler, the uh, also another FFG-era walker uh, for the Allies this time. This unit is definitely one that we don't see that often. And I think it's a, for a very good reason, it's overcosted for what it does. Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those problems when you only have one die, it 
does a lot of damage and when you hit it's very good but you play a few games and you don't hit and you get just fucking tired with it so you don't use it you want cheaper units instead a few of them or more lesser damage but at least you hit something so that's um it has to of course be different from the laser and and the um uh tesla so of course it can't fire all the dice but there's something with the phaser that because i don't see many playing phasers on the whole and i think it's just because they have they are very powerful but they are so hard to hit with so that's why i think uh you don't play the cobra i don't think the price is any doesn't matter Uh, personally i I do play the Rattler from time to time, basically, because I have it and I spent some time painting it. Mm. Uh, but I also I agree that both of the Cobra and Rattler are a bit uh, overpriced. They overcosted. It's it's not that much actually. It's it's a little bit, but it's you know mm, yeah. just you know. Yeah, it, it seems like for the same amount of points, you can get something that will perform better. Yeah. In the same yeah. battlefield role, basically, yeah. unfortunately. So hopefully we are going to see some modifications, some update to these units. Yeah, though, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. I can't. Uh, um, I, earlier I was sitting a lot of, you know, making lists and stuff with the points and, and trying to figure out, put them right. I can't remember exactly, but I think, at, you know, one point less, maybe two for... Uh, for the two points less for the Cobra, possibly uh, something like that. So it's it's not that much. It's just slightly overcosted. But when you compare mm. it to other uh, medium walkers and the Allies, you just mm, no. I think I'm gonna get you know I don't know Barking Dog or Steel Rain or something else instead, because it's you know. Yeah, I showed you guys beforehand uh, my alternate list of, uh, just for fun, M4 list taken to Poland because no one is expecting to face that lot of walkers. So I think you could have surprised people by just Mm -hmm. having M4s. And even in that list, I had one of everything except a Cobra. Mm -hmm. I had the Rattler because I needed it for air cover, but but still, I, I... I had everything. I had actually the RV uh, Mickey as well. I mean, the repaired walker, but I there was just no place for the Cobra. Mm, <laughs> Sorry, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's tragic, but because it's fun, it's very visually cool. Yeah, especially this picture. Uh, so I, I really mm. like the look of especially the the Rattler turret with those anti air guns. Uh, for some no, reason, mm. just uh, the, all the anti air walkers, they they do something for me. I don't yeah, know what it is, but that's just because it's a Swedish cannon. Because <laughs> yeah, it's be. low force uh, guns, so that's why you like them. So, yeah, that uh, could be. be. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I'm also yeah. thinking about the the um, amphibious uh, oh. stuff that we yeah. had in in versions uh, former ver- versions of the game. Yeah, uh, if we will actually see a comeback, I, I know we saw that um, like a preview or something idea of uh, like uh, yeah, extra upgrade, upgrades yeah, for cars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, equipment. So we'll see that might be included in this. We'll we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah. I definitely hope that because that it could that could also be. A reason why people are starting to play Rattlers and Cobras because they are, for some reason, easier in swamps and stuff like that. And yeah. if it's good, I don't know if it's going to be actually used that much, but it's, it's a cool feature. Basically, mm. it's something that makes it a bit different from other stuff. So yeah, yeah. Well, well now we're just speculating because I, I seriously don't know shit. But the new Hellgate, the rumors that we've heard at least was that Hell. The 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 big uh, burst out of Cthulhu, but Cthulhu perhaps burst from two places. It was the Pacific and from Babylon, and uh, perhaps Hellgate is just still in Africa. But if uh, when we get to the Pacific, there must be more watery scenarios. There yeah. must mm-hmm. be landing on islands and stuff like that. And I'm thinking that perhaps maps will be emerging, or they'll be printing some maps with with more water. Mm-hmm. elements on them yeah then... that would be cool i think uh, some uh, i was thinking just about those uh, equipment cards because it would be really nice to shake a few things up and do some uh, new things for the 1947 version of the game we, we mm-hmm. have seen water terrain of course in, mm-hmm. in previous versions but it's not really a thing in most 1947 games no that's true 
Uh, but then also we have that beautiful uh, data picture that Paolo printed from the Everglades, where the hot dog with an extra uh, recoilless rifle were walking through the water. Oh, yeah. And uh, many of us were very excited about that picture, uh, both because we would like to have a hot dog with a recoilless rifle. That could be even better than just a regular hot dog. And uh, then also thinking about playing in a scenario where you play through the swamp tr- lands and perhaps even have uh, ran- yeah, random <laughs> event alligator uh, attacks. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, because... I mean, if you look like the, if you look at the um, uh, certain scenario on the uh, the war, uh, the um, endless, endless war, endless yeah. war campaign, uh, you have those spiders that. Uh, you, so why not have alligators in a scenario? Yeah, sure. Why yeah. not? Mm. Uh, next up, uh, talking a bit about Cthulhu, there, yeah. the Cthulhu Lamasso statue. So this is uh, similar to the uh, Lamasso pillar, but it's uh, smaller. It's basically a freestanding statue. And I, I actually think that I prefer the look of this. This this just looks really, really cool. <laughs> yes, it does. It's beautiful. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's very nice details, as usual, with all the terrains and miniatures from Dust Studio. And, uh, yeah, it goes so well with the rest of the stuff they've released, With I mean, the ruins and everything. It's, yeah. it's going to look awesome on the table. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I could make a big order or a big order. It's going to be a big order. It's not going to be a big, big order, but it, it's going to weigh so much. <laughs> so sometimes during the fall, I'm hoping if after the, all the semesters and stuff, I'm hoping for a few statues of the new stuff. But... Uh, I'm 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 frightening of the cost of shipping. <laughs> no, I don't know how because I, I get and I even if they're in Poland when we go down we're flying sheep because we can't afford to have too much package. So I don't know how I'm going to get it home. But well, yeah, <laughs> buy, buy an extra suitcase while you're there and uh, pay for extra. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to think about something. Yeah. Then we'll go to the SSU. Uh, another re-release, the Natalia Nadia Natasha kit. So th- this is something that uh, I think a lot of people are going to be happy about trying mm. to get into the SSU because these are just the backbone of a lot of SSU lists at the moment. So mm. being able to find these easily again yeah. is going to make a lot of people happy, I think. Yeah, yeah it's going to be it's nice great. seeing a few uh, of those uh, running around on battlefields. So it's, it's, it's going to be great. And then finally, the uh, PT-47B, the uh, transport t- uh, kind of amphibious tank for both the SSU block and for the PLA. So also um, a re-release, I think, because we've seen this. No, this is the new one with the uh, yeah, yeah, with the turret. Is, yeah, this is super new. And this yes, is, of course, uh, because yeah. the, the the one we saw before was the command version. Yeah, That's yes, true. yes, and they're gonna it's, it's the first in line. Uh, there are gonna be a, a couple of these now coming. So yeah. we, we we know uh, we've seen the pictures. Uh, they're not they've been on the. The web, yeah. So uh, the, uh, this is just super cool. Uh, totally, uh, one could say a totally bullshit of a unit because it's not going to do anything. But, but I love it. <laughs> I, I just, I, I just want to buy them. I, I just, I could, I could sit at my table uh, making uh, car sounds with these and go <laughs> <laughs> racing with yeah, your yes. uh, with your Dodge trucks. Yes, and, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, these. I mean, I mean, you charm me with these <laughs> fighting the uh, uh, Desert Scorpions later on. I mean, how cool would that be? But uh, think about it. If we get a lot of water-based scenarios, yeah. then these guys are going to be really, really good for yes. transporting your infantry. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep, yep. I, I'm just, I'm super excited. And I, I'm just thinking that it will almost demand that we get new terrain or new mats or something like that because we, we can't have all this amphibious things if we don't have water so and I, and I love that yeah um, hmm. and yeah. that's it for for those dust usa things that we know when they are coming but there mm-hmm. was also uh, some previews that we don't know exactly when they are coming but mm-hmm. we know that they are coming the spetsnaz army box we've seen uh, also mm-hmm. uh, containing uh, the invader Mm. And one kill squad, one saboteur squad, and one sniper squad. Mm. Oh. So it's uh, just 
to get the invader yeah. <laughs> directly in the army box. Uh, yeah. This is going to sell like hotcakes, I think. I hope so. It's a sweet deal. It's a beautiful little, wonderful little piece. Can do so much. Uh, it still has its uh, faults, and it's not invincible. Um, but the uh, the composition of it is just just amazing. I think so. Yeah, I, I guess you didn't expect me to say anything else, but, <laughs> <laughs> that's, but that's true. Yeah. But uh, is this? I mean, this army box does not include any Walker. No, no. it's the Invader instead. Yeah, right. Well, it's a Spetsnaz. So, so it's a it's vehicle instead of uh, Walker. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, we had that discussion on the forums. The kind of difference there. Um, and also, uh, we saw that Paolo recently put up uh, an image of uh, another mm. thing we knew was coming, the yes. new model for Rosie, uh, yes, the yes. Soldier 2 var- vari- variant with the, with the chest plate. And uh, we've seen the computer render before, but this is the finished painted model. Yeah. And yeah, looks really good. <laughs> it's super nice. Uh, I love it. And... Uh, I hope <laughs> uh, no one took offense that someone was a little bit tongue in cheek there on the Facebook pages when they were asked what's new with her. And it's actually <laughs> not that she's <laughs> just reprinted, she has pigtails as well. Yeah. I, I love that one. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Oh, here's another beautiful picture from. Ooh. Yeah, the new uh, premium wildfire. That's, uh, that's also really cool. Oh no, no, not the wildfire. Sorry, the um, what is it? The black hawk. Yeah, there's a black hawk. It, yes. it just feels a little bit more bulky for some reason. I don't know what, what's happened there. I think but it's I think it's a USMC specific black hawk. Maybe it has different feet. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's slightly different. From it, the old it, it's, it's like the wildfire uh, body. I mean, like the wildfire legs with the black hawk body. It's mm-hmm. definitely more. It's more hunked down. It's more T thirty seven. I mean, I know. It's, I mean, um, the pose. You mean? Yeah. yeah I mean, in the, the old game, uh, um, the pre dust game, eighty forty seven. Yes, thank you for that. Uh, yeah, it's more like one of those SSU walkers. Uh, hmm. uh, it's very very interesting and very cool. Uh, and that's um, I missed yeah. this one before. So yeah, that's um, really cool. And finally, we have also seen uh, an upcoming new version of uh, Angela. The yeah, sli- the, the sniper, sniper one. Yes. Where did um, I put that one? And mm. that was uh, hinted that that's going to be a limited uh, resin release uh, coming shortly, and we're going to get a plastic version ah, yeah, later okay. on. Um, in mm. an army, in a, um, hero. In a hero box or yeah, something well, like that. Good, yeah. good, good, good. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, Angela mm. was also one of the very early heroes in the game, and and. Yeah, yeah. Paolo mentioned they're over ten years old, both of those two. So he thought both ladies needed a, a tune-up. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the I mean you, t- you see that very, very clearly on the picture with Angela. She has a much thicker uh, sniper rifle in this mm-hmm. model, mm-hmm. Uh, so that should alleviate some of the kind of bendy sniper yeah. rifle thing with the old model. Yeah. That was kind of her, her claim to fame back in the day that sh- she never could shoot straight because of the <laughs> bent barrel. Mm-hmm. So. Shooting around corners. Yeah, that's true. Mm. <laughs> so that could be it. And just that sniper rifle, Angela, this was one of those I, I really missed that I didn't get. So I'm, I'm ha- really super happy that just that one is coming back as well. So it's going to be bought. Yeah. Then uh, uh, Greg, our old pal from Dust USA, yeah. uh, made a very interesting post on uh, the Dust Monthly forums. So for any of you who haven't been there in a while, should definitely go check that out at sackdust.com slash smf. And uh, he kind of hinted a lot about the upcoming uh, Japanese uh, releases. And uh, what he says is, Japan the new block will be released at Christmas 2018, so only a few months from now. For the moment, it's still a tentative schedule being worked on. The starter set will include the Ninja Lady that we've seen uh, before, Wang Si Wong, uh, a small size um, walker, uh, kind of like the Heinrich style, uh, with the new specific uh, block weapon for the Japanese, which is the Railgun. Mm. We have no idea how this will work. Mm. I'm kind of hoping that it's going to go through units and shoot like in a straight line or something like that. Mm. That would be very thematic, Mm. but we'll see. Um, There's also going to be another uh, small walker with two to three weapons, including the Railgun, so it's going to be different options. Another medium walker, 
uh, with two weapon sets. That's going to be the Jagluther uh, kind of size. There's also going to be the, the ninja troops uh, that we've seen. Um, there's going to be in the starter set and the navy cadets, the schoolgirls with katanas. Mm-hmm. So they're basically ninjas as well. Mm-hmm. So this, that's kind of what's going on um, for, from the start. Uh, it continues to write, all of these are scheduled to release at the same time to allow players to get into the army all at once. Uh, But then he also says that this is a tentative uh, thing. Uh, Things could happen and things could change. And the plan is then that uh, the rest of the releases is going to be sprinkled into uh, 2019, uh, kind of like they did with the Desert Scorpions. Yeah, Mm -hmm. great. So a lot of things to look forward to. Finally, well, of course, we we got the fourth uh, block with, uh, with the Mythos, but I know that not what a lot of people kind of were hoping for. Be- but uh, finally getting the Japanese is going to be... Uh, this, I think it's going to be cathartic for some people. Mm-hmm. Because this is something that the studio have hinted f- at for years. Mm-hmm. And it looks like it actually finally is coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be so good for the game. Yeah. It's, just uh, more... and I uh, Just more um, choices, more variety on the boards. We... Now we see mostly the the three big blocks, and we see a sprinkling. We see some mythos players, but that's it's not really represented in the same way as the other three, which is uh, I think understandable. Fair. Yeah, I yeah. think that's probably what we are going to see. But the Japanese, I'm definitely going to see think that these are going to be represented just as much as the big or three original uh, yeah. blocks. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, I could e- easily see uh, some type of players just coming in for just Japanese yeah. who hasn't been into the game before. So uh, at least I wouldn't be very surprised if that weren't happening. Thinking and of people I've played against. And that's, games. Uh, that's another yeah. thing, starting so. to think about the Hellgate and the Amphibious thing, mm-hmm. because we we have seen some tentative pictures of uh, the Japanese walkers, and they are also amphibious. Yeah, the, the ones where the amphibious uh, part were taking off we are easily to be taking off. So you can, you can start with the amphibious uh, surrounding of the walker, so to speak, and then you just, with an easy m- move, you take it off the amphibious ring and then you have the walker when it strides onto land so I mean beachhead scenarios mm. please I want yeah, those yeah. Um, and also uh, if I remember um, Greg's posts correctly he also mentioned that some of the Japanese units will get access cards as well so there will be some kind of crossover possibilities mm. that's also going to be super interesting to see how that works out yeah, because fifty percent is loyal to the Axis, and fifty percent are more free in spirit. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> or uh, yeah. And, that, yeah. and that's a good way to kind of get uh, this new block started at uh, at the start when there's not that many uh, mm-hmm. units available. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of way to fill out the ranks. So yeah, yeah. it's going to be really really cool to see. All right, let's go over to mail call, and uh, we've got a, a couple of questions actually uh, on Facebook. We got. Uh, a question from uh, Seth Squires. What pre-Babylon old school block units hold up versus the newer factions? And uh, yeah, this is, a <laughs> this is a biggie, I think. Uh, well, he, he specifically says units. And I think there are definitely some of the older units that are kind mm-hmm. of old, uh, all-time favorites for some people. Of, of course, mm-hmm. the KV-47s is a very good uh, Thing for for the SSU. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. So that's one of those. I, I would say also for the SSU, the if you talking about factions compared, if you compare the old faction units versus versus the new Soldier One, more mostly um, faction units. I would say the Red Guard for the SSU is one of the better ones, and mostly because of their platoon rule that gives them damage resilience the first three rounds. That's really, really powerful. Yeah, the assault squad has always been uh, to my to, to me. I think it was underpriced before, and it's even better now. So, uh, uh, assault that assault squad is 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 golden, uh, no matter what. Uh, the Chinese are always good. They are definitely holding their own. Yeah, the original Chinese ones. Yeah, 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 the original yeah. ones. Yeah. Yeah, the only pure ones. <laughs> uh, the the, the and, ones that uh, are true to the frack. For me, the the, the first. Thing that popped up in in my head now was uh, the steel guards 
I mean, they are mm. a lot better now than they used to be, actually. That's true. Yeah. And they, I mean, there are some nasty steel guards lists out there. Uh, but, but they are almost Babylonian because they were coming in the, the same vicinity of the Babylonian area, to, to me at least. So, uh, mm. so I, I mean, don't know. There, there, there's some new units for the steel yeah. guards, sure. And, and, but there's, and there's still no block unit. So. Yeah, that's true. true. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just have <laughs> yeah, to shoot true. you down, you know, man. True. Uh, uh, although uh, I always had one of my favorite units before the Russians came was just regular nowadays combat unit for the Rangers. I still think they hold up at least if you boost them with in the right setting and with the hero stuff like that. But at least the weapon squad is is to me a very good unit. Uh, it doesn't shoot that much on infantry, but it still has dice against infantry it can take out vehicles it can it can basically hurt any unit from uh, level one infantry to level three chopper uh, level three flyers mm -hmm. we have no level three flyers so we don't have to mm -hmm. care about that but they can take out any sort of unit uh, not well but still so to me uh, the the weapon squad of the rangers is still a very good unit even though it's also a little bit pricey on eight points but mm, yeah mm, i also mm. yeah you know that from before as well i mm. think uh, uh, at least a few of the ranger squads are like one point too expensive but one squad that usually performs pretty well is the what's it called the close assault squad the one with the one flamer and the yeah. shotguns and demo charges and stuff <laughs> that that unit is actually holding up very well i would say it's um, it has some weaknesses, of course. It can't shoot against aircraft, for yeah. example. Uh, but against almost everything else, uh, it's a threat. Yeah. So it's, that, that's a very good unit. It's so true. It, it only has one weak point, and it's a a aircraft. And so uh, that's a very good unit. But the, uh, the, there is, for some reason, the other Ranger troops, they get... It doesn't work when they get to over-specialize. Well, I mean, the two Flamers never give out as much punch as the one flamer for some reason it's very strange yeah and but it's one point, point more ex expensive yeah. that should, should actually be a seven yeah even though it should are be flamers. may possibly price the same mm. or uh, two flamers should be cheaper so I, I have no idea why that one is is more expensive it feels mm. weird yeah and the heavy rangers uh, squad you don't get underlying grenades, uh, you only get two basokas, and the uh, normal weapons, rifles, are useless. Mm. So it's basically three lives running around taking hits for the two basokas. So that's just uninteresting when you can, for, for the same price, get the underlying grenade launchers and one basoka and fire against and have the machine guns mm -hmm. from the weapon squad. Yeah. Yeah. So it, for some reason, the, the specialized units uh, for the rangers are not working, and if you want, I mean, you have the um, the scouting ones. The uh, ah shit, I don't remember the name of them now. The the ones they have scout. Um, the recon. A recon. Thank you very much. That's the one. Recon rangers. Yeah, but if you play rangers, you usually play the ranger platoon, and then you get scout the first turn. Hmm. So you don't need any recon rangers. So basically, hmm. you you have to save points. Then you have the combat squad. Or you have the points, and then you do the uh, weapon squads. The rest of the ranger squads, or and then you yeah, boost that, with one the, of those um, assault the, the, guys. The ranger platoon where everyone gets the, the scout skill is yeah, it's a it's a nice platoon. Yeah. But I always when I when I read it when I think about it, one of the units that you can take as yeah. a combat unit is it's the, the recon. recon. Yeah. Mm. So why? So, yeah, it just feels backwards to <laughs> me. <Yeah. laughs> if they had to be there to teach the others how to scout. <laughs> I, that would be fine with me if there was just that fluff, because the rangers are yeah, hard yeah, that, that could be your headcanon. Yeah, so, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> perhaps it is. Yeah. But uh, and then, of course, I'm going to... I'll hint it now, so people don't get too surprised later on, <laughs> at least in Poland. R remember also, Heavy Ranger Mortar Squad. It's very nice scouting three squares before you fire your mortar. Because your opponent always thinks, oh yeah, he's just going to walk one square. I'm going to be safe over here. Oh no, you're not. <laughs> I'm going around the corner with my ranger's mortar squad and I fire at you. Mm -hmm. So you're not safe. And with three steps, you can do a lot of interesting positioning from the 
baseline of yeah. your deployment yeah. script. Uh, and that's a mm. really cool uh, trick there. And the, yeah. Are you sure you want to give that away before the tournament? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it's better <laughs> that people hopefully know that that can happen beforehand. Yeah. Or, you know, if you play the wrong opponent, they just still, they don't perhaps listen to this. So they, <laughs> but... I, I might just scout with my mortars, yeah. just so you know. Um, I have another unit that I kind of want to uh, to highlight also for the allies that I think uh, has got got a very nice boost going into 1947, and uh, that's the mobile HQ. Yeah, because there's. Uh, a ton of guns on it, mm, yeah. and it got from uh, vehicle three up to vehicle five. Yeah, so it's it's really really good yeah. <laughs> for for those points actually, yeah, yeah. and it has uh, the passengers, it has the advanced reactive fire, it it's a lot of stuff into one package, and that's that could maybe be the Achilles heel. It's kind of too many eggs in one basket, maybe. But it's still, I think it's a really good unit. Mm. Yes, it is. It's a very good unit, actually. The mm. only problem I have with the big uh, beetle-like uh, Type 5 walkers, like the Long Tom, like the HQ, like the um, Skysweeper, is that it's four squares. And you tend to get stuck with it. Yeah. So uh, I know Olivier has talked a little bit about it as well, but on the, they play with those four mats, I mean two by two mats. And on those scenarios, I understand that they these are golden because you don't get stuck, you or it's so big fe- mm-hmm. playing fields that they can really find their space. But on two mats, it's extremely hard just getting them on the board sometimes. Yeah, they they and, tend, as you say, they tend to get stuck, or maybe even worse, kind of get in the way of your own troops. We we have one guy in our kind of gaming group that. Kind of regularly comes to our small local tournaments w- with a list using three of those heavy walkers, mm. like the Devastators and, and those. And it's just, sometimes he has trouble getting all of them onto the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so true. I actually had that problem uh, last year when I played the Germans and had a captured uh, um, Skysweeper. Uh, it was very good and I liked it, but <laughs> in at least two of the games... Uh, my opponent managed to kill my smaller walkers uh, a little bit too quick, so uh, it had very hard time maneuvering into positioning. Yeah. So, uh, especially against one guy which didn't had any shoppers as well. So when it got stuck, it was just oh yeah, that's a sky sweeper standing over there. Happy. I me. actually, um, oh, sorry to interrupt. No, no, just uh, yeah, um, I actually thought of one more old kind of block unit uh, that I play fairly regularly and I also see which is the standard Ludwig Walker. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oldie but a goldie. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. It's, uh, I mean, it's not spectacular or anything. It doesn't have like super, any super weapons, but you know, it really holds its ground. It, yeah. it's, it's a very consistent unit, I yeah, think, exactly. for, for the points. Uh, it does its job, and uh, it's... The yeah. guns are, you know, strong enough against most things. It has some uh, uh, range, it has a smoke launcher, it has the machine gun, and it's, uh, yeah, it's fast enough if you, if you really need to push it. Yeah. Uh, yeah and those a, uh, big guns have two dice. So you basically against a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's uh, the big uh, thing for me as well. I, I really don't like the anti-tank, like the pounders, which mm. only roll one die. No. I, I have a very hard time fielding those types of units, no. just because I I don't like that uh, big, taking that big of a risk with it. Basically, yeah. if I field a pounder, it's basically almost every time to shoot at infantry on long range, because it's got that blast possibility. So yeah, it doesn't do much, but if I pound you a few times before you advance and then when you get close with my double machine guns that pounder could do something but i i don't i would never play a pounder to hunt uh walkers or tanks or something like that pounder is long range infantry instead of uh artillery i mean or something like that yeah if you're playing uh, uh, from short side to short side yeah. like or if you're playing on three mats yeah from from short side uh then you can really use the range of it and it, it yeah it could do some work but Definitely. otherwise uh, the ludwig i see the ludwig as uh, a lot better than the uh, pounder oh yes yes, yeah. yes. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. For what you think it should do when you see it for the first sight, the, the <laughs> airway. You should just sh- yeah, you should I mean, use the pounder for the things that you think you should use it for. Yeah, but the, the pounder <laughs> is uh, I don't know. It should be at least a point cheaper, probably mm. two points or something. Absolutely. I don't know. Maybe. It's uh, yeah. But still, then it's a ton of extra access units. I mean, the ghosts, for instance. Uh, I don't know if they call the ghost anymore, but, but yeah, yeah, it's a recon grenade. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are super. Super, a super unit. Uh, you can have them in any army, <laughs> almost. Uh, the the Hans, little walker yeah. with five lives. Mm. You never kill that extra life because yeah. you always think, oh, it's just the three. I, I uh, mm. no, it's just one life less, and then it shoots you dead, yeah. and you just. And just talking you, about axis units, yeah. of, I, I think of course the the heavy grenadiers. Mm, yeah, uh, they definitely hold their own, uh, especially uh, maybe not if you are going to build an entire army around them. But sprinkling them in uh, in in an army for specific roles, they do wonders. Uh, they are my go-to anti-air in most of my axes. It's just the uh, uh, yeah, it's just that amount of firepower and resilience from an infantry unit. Uh, yeah. Very very useful. Mm, definitely. All right. Uh, mm. Next question comes from uh, Olivier Galka, mm. and I, I think he's uh, kind of muddled up the math here because the question uh, verbatim is: Is sixty-two dice plus ten expert dice and re-roll failed ones overpowered? Uh, in parentheses with Rolf and Falmshim Jäger and the aircraft squad, we looked at this and we came to fifty fifty-two. Uh, with the expert dice, and this kind of suggests that it's uh, a total of 72, mm. so 62 plus 10. Uh, but still, um, 52 dice of which 10 are expert. Uh, is that overpowered? <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, I have had many unpleasant uh, account- un- encounters with Rolf, but uh, 9 out of 10 has always gone in my favor. So yeah, he deals hurt, and he's a fucking menace when he comes into onto the game board. But when you see him, at least I think I realize, oh, I have to manage. This is Rolf coming. Okay, we do this, and yeah, he I, he's allowed to hurt me. But then I make sure to clean him off this place, and then when he's done, my opponent has problems because he has counted on having Rolf longer than he has. So. Yeah, I mean, that unit is... Uh, it's a good combination, yeah. basically. But the, the game has tons of good combinations. Yeah. So this isn't really that unique, uh, actually. And because they are um, airdropping, there's always that chance that you fail with the, with the dice. Uh, yeah. I mean, so you only get one action. I mean, yeah, he, he's got um, infantry ace and everything. But, but still, uh, the... the um, the player who plays this combination, he can't really know for sure. And if he fails, he probably dies. <laughs> so, yeah. And I know it was a little bit absurd, but since I had my, I had that one game, and, uh, uh, sorry, I'm losing my, uh, um, uh, Roger, Roger, my good friend. Uh, oh, yeah. I hope, yeah, at least he is. Uh, he he had a lovely game with me when my when his uh, Rolf and his uh, anti aircraft squad were dropping on me, and my mortar squad boys uh, drowned them in uh, the swamps mm-hmm. in the canal. <laughs> in that scenario, after that, I I don't think I need to uh, be too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have too much yeah, and of, to, uh, uh, of course it also I mean it all, also really depends on uh, what Rolf and his guys are up against yeah for of course. example if you feel the, the list you talked about before Ludwig with mm-hmm. only vehicles and mostly vehicle force uh, Rolf and his unit is not going to do that much work actually no <laughs> so definitely not <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, these uh, 52 dice, that's only if they're shooting at uh, other Soldier 1. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. So yeah. Uh, if you know you're going to face off against Rolf, don't feel Soldier 1s. No, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> and uh, to me, I think uh, Laura and the Panzers is, is a more powerful unit than Rolf. Rolf is good, and Rolf is necessary perhaps for that list when you play, if you play a fraction a list for, for the Fashion Shaker. But uh, I think still Laura and the Panzers is better. 
and yeah, they are a bit more expensive as well, a few mm. points, but, uh, yeah, but, still. but still, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I would, I'm probably more scared of you know facing Lara and her yeah. guys uh, rather than Rolf actually, and so. just bringing up the same thing over and over again so people get tired of me. I mean, having the Steel Guard anti infantry squad without a hero is still, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, this is just child's play compared to that. So, uh, as long as they are around, nothing is overpowered. <laughs> I'm, I'm really on your side now, Magnus, for after a few, few heated debates, but uh, I'm, I'm convinced. I can change opinion. <laughs> and I mean, nice to have you on board. Yeah, considering you can boost them with a, uh, with a guaylo if you don't want to fly them in the chopper. So, I mean, mm, yeah. it's just, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, next question isn't really a question. It's more of a request. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, mm -hmm. it's uh, Frank Washburn says, please share your favorite and most powerful lists in which you mix and match units to forego the hero point bonus. Uh, I don't think that we can actually give a direct answer to this, at this moment at least. No, we, we <laughs> talked about it a little bit before recording. And I, since, since the release of 1947, uh, I have been playing... Uh, for the vast majority of games, it's been uh, faction faction lists one way or the other, basically. Uh, I've probably tried some constellations, but uh, I can't really remember any specific one that worked very well or, or I felt this was a super combination. Uh, I have been thinking of uh, an allied list using... Um, uh, some cool pilots. I mean, Jimmy, Crazy Jimmy, and... Um, Greg and EC and stuff like that, but uh, nothing. Yeah, it's, it's nothing the same. I haven't me. tried that out yet, so. Um. Yeah, I, I've been thinking uh, along those same lines because uh, just the allies have some really cool heroes from the different blocks yeah, that yeah. could be good to to keep in the same list, but it's not, not nothing that I have tried at as yet. So um, I think we might be getting back to to this at some point when yeah. we've experimented a bit. I have two, though, uh, of course. The first one is one that, uh, unfortunately, one that isn't playing the game anymore, but uh, or he's doing it somewhere else. Uh, but he went abroad for a number of years, so perhaps that's why he lost track with us. Uh, but Andreas, the guy who is even more SSU by heart than I am, yeah, what? yeah, is that no, possible? no, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not even allowed to be in the same room with him <laughs> when it comes to level. He always dictated that he he never played heroes in his army, uh, with the simple fact. And I tried to take this on board and and have a few times done it himself. Every Russian soldier is a hero, <laughs> so oh. you don't need a hero. Just field block SSU, and the heroes will emerge amongst the troops and it actually works uh, so I've done that a few times not many times but there's one army where I almost always nowadays at least still break the combination and that's uh, when it's the Bloy Kreutz because then I have to go outside the match to if I want to make it combative uh, it will probably change now with new Bloitkreutz units and the HQ and stuff like that but uh, if I make Bloitkreutz units with the stuff I have right now uh, that was actually the only reason why I bought Rolf and the uh, anti-aircraft squad, because that was my solution to uh, uh, Bloitkreutz's problem with anti-air uh, mm -hmm. and also the long range. Because either you can put them in and hurt something on the other side of the field that you have to hurt before your zombies, your gorillas and stuff like that get to your opponent, or you need some backup against some nasty flyers, shoppers or stuff like that. And Rolf surely can do that trick very well. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, well. Yeah, but I think we we need to uh, experiment some mm -hmm. more now. Uh, yeah. and, it's a good and question from Frank. Question. Yeah, and uh, uh, it's a very good thing to think about because the you you kind of get locked into that hero bonus. Mm, you yeah. think, how can I build this army and still keep the hero bonus? And it's kind of becomes this uh, this stone around your neck. So you, you, I must do this. It's it's kind of that mentality. So I think it's probably good to try to step out of that mind space mm -hmm. and just experiment. I, I do agree with you, but I also uh, contradict it a little bit or go against it because to me at least some, un some lists I build 
I build fraction wise because I want them to be thematic. Yeah, so, for of instance, uh, when I build a Spetsnaz army, I just don't want to see anything else in Spetsnaz because I don't think they want anything else in their ranks. They don't. The others are not worthy. Mm-hmm. So, if I go Spetsnaz, I go full Spetsnaz, and the rest is just, well, almost. Well, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Next and one. Final question. Uh, Brian Bookstrucker asks: Zombies versus Gorilla Army. Who wins? Go! <laughs> yes! <laughs> well, one so, would say oh. zombies because sooner or later the gorillas will turn to zombies. I would say so. the, the spectators. Yes! <laughs> of course. Yeah, definitely. Anyone uh, who's yeah. watching. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> Brian, get a friend and do this. Please do, yes. Because Put I, it up on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> it, it would be amazing because I, I can't recall that I've ever seen a zombie horde going against the gorilla army. I'm, uh, I'm thinking just... Uh, Fill an, or- fill, an- fill an army with just the standard zombies, the mindless zombies, <laughs> and fill the other army with just the standard gorilla squads and just fight it out. <laughs> that, but then, I'm sorry to be a, a, a spoiler here or a downer here, but then the zombie wins because the zombies will have more units, more yeah. hits, and they will eventually kill more uh, gorillas because they hit at the same time. They have no first strike. So I'm um, unfortunately, but if you yeah. have the gorillas with the flam, uh, the engineering ones, they have to, they can shoot beforehand. Then I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what Brian means here. Uh, yeah, the, the, there is the, a the, definition the, issue. Yeah, here. exactly. Yeah. Is the, <laughs> does it mean pl- pure like 100% zombies against 100% gorillas? I'm not sure about that. So if you make mm. kind of a zombie themed army with mm. some other but stuff, then. Then there are also a lot of different zombie units. There mm. are three different uh, standard units, and there are a lot of heroes. With the gorillas, we also have a lot of heroes, and we have two units. So you could yeah. make quite a, a diverse mm. army using only yeah. zombies. But I would, uh, but I, I, for once, I think I'm going to agree with Ludwig here that if you make two armies, one that has you know mostly zombies against one that has mostly gorillas, I also think that the zombies are going to win out just because there are more of them, yeah. more bodies, more, that could be. more and attacks. If you, if you go one step further and you add in platoons to this, then I think it's just a no-brainer for the zombies. Mm-hmm. Because uh, the gorilla platoons are just not that interesting at all yeah, in comparison. Um, person, yeah. Uh, Frank von Stein and his pl- platoon would no. do wonders against yeah. uh, mostly yeah. gorilla army. Because uh, they have to come so thick and compact. But also it's very hard if you're going to just, do I like the zombies or gorilla more? One part of me wants to say, well of course the gorillas because the gorillas are always my favorite. I'm a Planet of the Apes big fan, I have all the movies and blah 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 blah. But the other way, I have collected a few zombie squads and I've painted them and I've had the I, I've done some special modeling on some of my zombies which made them unique and very lovable I think uh, when they maybe eat. huggable? Yeah well I mean I have, I have one who holds his own head like almost like uh, I mean Shakespeare uh, the Hamlet stuff and uh, <laughs> the other one that nibbles on his arm and stuff like that so I mean I have a very warm and fussy feeling for my zombies and I'm also happy with the way the painting has come out so it would really be hard if I just have to sell one of my armies the gorillas or the zombies the zombies that would be a oh evil choice yes so I keep both (laughs) buy more of course of course that's that's, that's the answer to everything (laughs) yes buy more yeah buy more yeah (laughs) and uh, I think that's it for this episode and people call us hoarders yeah I don't I I have no (laughs) idea why no No. idea so uh, thank you guys for joining me for this episode thank you you. yeah and thank our audience for listening and as usual until uh, next episode we will see you and especially Ludwig Uh, on the battlefield in Poland. (laughs) Yay! (laughs) Thank you for listening to Dust War Journals. You can find us at dustwarjournals.com or on social media at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Dust War Journals. And you can find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash dustwarjournals. All music used in this podcast is made by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com.